it all <laughs> in order today. See you later. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm excited that you are here. Okay. Today, we are going to talk about tea tree oil. Tea tree is native to Australia and it is a really big tree. Uh, the tree, if it's unpruned, can have a trunk that is um, 10 to 15 feet wide and it'll grow about 20 feet tall. So about two stories, a little over two stories high. And if it's left unpruned, the trunk gets really big. Um, and it has leaves all year round. They're, the leaves look, as you can see in the diagram here, the photograph, the leaves look kind of like little tiny pine needles. Thank you, Code. Um, and it grows these little white blossoms that look like the red bottle, br bottle brush tree. Uh, its bark is kind of papery like um, the birch tree. And uh, it prefers, in, in Australia, the, it likes to live in tropical and subtropical swampy areas. And in the US, it uh, is a zone eight and above, and this is a full sun tree. It doesn't do well at all if it um, has any kind of shade. This tree really loves the sun. Um, this, the essential oil is steam distilled from the leaves, and um, the oil is clear or colorless. Um, so we'll take a little look at that right now. Tea tree oil is a very camphory, piney scent. Clear, very, um, very fluid. It runs really easily. And I consider this to be a warming oil on your skin. Um, so any area that you apply it to gets a nice warming sensation to it. The active, the active chemistry, oops, pardon me, that should say uh, tea tree. <laughs> the active chemistry in tea tree oil Um, the constituents are terpenes, gamma terpenes, alpha terpenes, and cineol. Cineol is one that you will find in rosemary. Um, so you can, you, there are, they blend well together if you want to combine them. 45% um, terpenes, terpenes um, which is where you get all of your pine-like scent from. The therapeutic effects of tea tree oil. Um, one of the most beautiful things about tea tree oil is that it doesn't really bother mucous membranes too much. Don't put this in your eyes though, you know, but you can use it safe in your neti pot. Um, if you are having um, bact bacterial vaginosis or trichomoniasis, two to five percent soaked on a tampon will effectively remedy this within 48 hours to a week, depending on um, your case. Um, it's antiviral, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, and analgesic. So topically, it is a, a pain reliever, a significant pain reliever. It is also bactericidal. Um, it is insecticidal for head or pubic lice. Um, protects the skin from deep burns of radiation therapy. So another oil for anyone doing um, cancer treatments. Uh, apply this before and after your radiation therapies and it helps um, keep your skin from frying and burning and opening up and becoming a, a wound and a separate care issue. Um, eight milligrams three times a day in a stomach acid resistant capsule for bladder infection um, does not cause liver enzyme deviation over a six month period. So if you have a 
chronic cystitis or if you have chronic bladder infection, this is a safe long-term treatment. Um, for vaginal yeast infections, tea tree oil is easily remedied with a tampon soaked in 20% tea tree to apricot oil um, for the carrier oil and change your tampon for about four times a day and you can leave this in overnight. This is not going to cause you any issues with toxic shock syndrome. Um, measurable benefits for inhalation therapy for asthma, bronchitis, and a good rinse for laryngitis. Hey guys, thanks for being here. Yeah, it's really great for lice. So, even though it's good for lice, it is not good for fleas on your dog. Tea tree oil is really toxic to your dog. Don't, don't use tea tree oil on your dog. Or cat. Um, it is a strong antimicrobial that works similarly to disinfectant to disinfectant such as chlorhexidine because it denatures protein. Um, it takes apart the cellular wall. So this is uh, really great for um, skin microbes and things. Um, it's an effective. It has an effective strength against Staphylococcus and Streptococcus. Um, so if you have a staph infection. This is really good for maintaining your wound cleanliness. You can um, use witch hazel and tea tree oil and uh, rinse your wound regularly to help kill and eradicate the staphylococcus. Um, and if you have streptococcus in your throat, you can do warm water and salt um, gargles with tea tree oil added to it. Um, really, really effective for it. Um, it is also effective against pityriasis versicolor folliculitis and int, excuse me, enterigo. It is a seborrheic, as well as seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff. So if you suffer from chronic dandruff, you can add this um, a significant percentage, up to 20% to your hair conditioner um, or even to coconut oil to treat your scalp with and it will help uh, bring down the dandruff and um, calm your scalp down. It's really great uh, for seborrheic dermatitis is uh, skin that um, is really rashy and dry and scratchy but also weepy and um, kind of wet. Wet in what it produces but dry in the texture of, of the skin condition. Um, Applying this to this kind of skin condition will really help to clear it up, relieve the pain and the fire in it, and um, it'll also create healing in the skin that's damaged. Um, it's really very effective in skin yeasts as well. So if you, you know, it's really great for thrush, it's really great for um, vaginal yeast infections, it's really great for nail fungus. Um, all of those things this oil is a, extremely effective against. Um, it helps to heal gingivitis with daily rinses. Um, in fact, it is more effective than chlorhexidine and sulfur, sulf, sulfadiazine against MRSA and, and is most, although the most effective is mupirazon, um, it is more effective than chlorhexidine against um, MRSA. So, this is definitely essential oil for you to keep in your bag. If you are traveling, if you are hiking, if you are snorkeling, if you're out in the water and you cut your foot, immediately apply some tea tree oil there um, because it is so effective against these things. Uh, let's see. Reduces histamine um, induced welts within 20 minutes. So if you have rubbed up an animal or some, a plant or have eaten, you know, have scraped yourself with something you are allergic to and you have um, allergic uh, welts on your skin, tea tree oil will bring your welts and itching and discomfort down within about 20 minutes. And it is a superb neat essential oil for your um, acne and face, facial blemishes. Some of the untested folk medicine uses of tea tree oil. And I like to list these in this conversation because um, over time, things prove themselves out for what they're good for, even if they haven't been researched in a lab yet. And um, it's important to know what uh, folk medicine talks about as far as 
plants and oils and things. Um, so the crushed leaf is really good for inhalation for cough and cold. Um, leaves sprinkled on wounds, crushed leaves sprinkled on wounds and covered with a poultice help um, to dry out infection and um, create healing in the wound. Um, infusion for sore throats and skin ailments. And we talked about making an infusion last time with Kelly on our show and um, so you can take your leaves and crush them up a little bit and boil them and have a have a beverage for um, gargling. This I wouldn't necessarily drink this but I would definitely gargle this and you can also apply the infusion to any of the skin ailments that you have if um, the oil f makes you feel too sensitive. Um, if, you're, if it's too uh, rough on your skin. It's really good for tonsillitis, pharyngitis, colitis, sinusitis, oral ulcers, um, nail mycosis, and insect bites. Green Moon says uh, poison ivy or poison oak? Yes. Yes, that would be a seborrheic um, skin er eruption. Definitely. Anything that gets weepy is definitely effect, uh, benefited by tea tree. Um, so, um, in the in the mental emotional plane, tea tree oil uh, is good for boredom, irritation, anxiety, and insecurity. For feeling disconnected, um, for feelings of jealousy or hurt, tea tree oil. Helps with depression, panic, isolation, loneliness, insecurity, apathy, mental fatigue, and grief. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to cover the full trifecta of wellness when we talk about our oils. And we want to make sure we talk about mental, emotional aspect of what our oils can do for us. Typically in inhalation therapy. So, um tea tree at a 10% with frankincense at 10% in calendula infused oil applied to a deep was applied to a deep wound a heal ulcer um, and light, pa lightly packed with sterile gauze and this uh, blend healed the wound completely within 14 days. The wound had been treated with pharmaceuticals and had tissue loss due to necrosis and it hadn't healed and so um, this was this 10% tea tree and frankincense oil was applied to the wound several times a day and unpacked and repacked um, and was completely completely healed in 14 days where it was not going to heal before. Um, so know that your tea tree oil and frankincense oil can be applied to deep wounds. Not all oils can or should be applied to deep wounds, but this is an essential oil that's really safe for a deep wound. Um, how to use fresh tea tree. Uh, the crushed leaves are inhaled and um, used to treat congestion and colds. Infused leaves um, can be drunk for cystitis at the onset. Um, and you can make a mash for bug bites and apply it. You don't even have to take that into the house. You can just uh, crush up the leaves and rub them against your skin. So. Um, you know, if you're out and you happen to be near a melaleuca tree, get your, um, get your leaves and crush them up and rub them onto your bite. It'll soothe that real quick. You can also crush your leaves and throw them into a bathtub as a tea um, for aches and pains and for improving any breathing difficulties that you're having. So the fresh plant is usable too. Clear skin oil. Um, you can make a really nice facial oil. I know it seems really scary to put an oil on your face when you've got a lot of blemishes. Um, but oils that will heal your skin and slow oil production and fight bacterial eruptions is really actually beneficial. You can use a different, a couple of different types of um, carrier oils. Some people like to use jojoba oil because it's the most similar to your own personal skin. Jojoba oil really actually is a wax um, and it is very easily absorbed into your skin. It doesn't leave your skin greasy. Um, 
it's very uh, is very similar to the oil that your own skin produces so but I recommend I recommended for this particular recipe apricot kernel oil because it's very light um, and if we're trying to clear the skin I think that leaving jojoba where you might have um, some waxiness in the oil to um, create issues with your pores that are already disrupted isn't as beneficial so I like to use apricot kernel oil when it comes to clear skin type oils and um, you use an ounce of apricot kernel oil, a third part tea tree, a third part frankincense oil, more skin healing there, and some lemon oil, um, and up to four drops of Roman chamomile oil. The Roman chamomile oil is very uh, soothing and it will calm, calm down the um, inflammation in the skin and it also creates uh, tissue regrowth so it helps protect against scarring you can apply this twice yeah. daily to a clean face um, and midday um, you know with a q-tip directly to any blemishes that you want um, to pay attention to so if you do a midday application use a use a clean q-tip each time there are some contraindications um, for using tea tree oil, this is another oil that is not indicated for children under six. Um, it can be toxic in large amounts, so if you're um, using tea tree oil in a capsule, you want to use that on a short-term basis. Um, anything really large, any dose really large, um, for a period of time will cause um, liver enzyme problems. So like we talked about earlier, eight milligrams a couple times a day and um, in a six month period is fine, but anything larger than that, you probably wanna be under the care of a, an aroma, certified aromatherapist to make sure that you're not um, gonna overdose yourself. Um, it can cause skin irritations in some people um, pregnant women in early trimesters and nursing moms should avoid this. Um, do not apply to eczemataceous skin, meaning skin that's extremely um, open and weeping. If you have, um, you really want to make sure that if you're going to apply it to really disrupted skin, you have a carrier oil and that you start with a very low percentage, 1%, maybe two at the most. Um, for people who have terpene, turpentine allergies, um, tea tree is not for you. It will cause skin irritations. Um, what? How do I give them more volume? Um, turn up your gain. You turn your gain up a little bit. Which one is that? Okay. Is that better? Is that better, Code Red? What's that? There, you're talking into that spot. Okay, right? yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, and um, tea tree oil has weak estrogenic and androgenic effects, so it can cause prepubescent gynecomastia in boys. So, um, make sure that if you're putting this on your young men's faces that it's that, that they're not applying it to their face to their back they're not taking a shower in it they're not washing their hair in it that they're just using it specifically um on their face so um that that's important to note also because it has a weak estrogenic effect um anybody who is dealing with estrogen related cancers probably want to avoid um, tea tree oil. Tea tree oil is a middle to top note that blends well with lemon, lavender, clary sage, peppermint, thyme, orange, grapefruit, melissa, frankincense, and peru balsam. Okay. And... Lastly, 
tea tree oil um, tea tree oil associates with the zodiac signs of Taurus Virgo and Capricorn and the solar system planets it associates with Venus Mercury and Saturn it is an earth element um, it associates with the earth star chakra and the third eye chakra and strengthens stomach and spleen third earth star chakra is low it's out of your body it's below your feet in the ground a couple of feet so this is um, even though it's a middle to top note in perfuming it is a very grounding centering connecting um, essential oil which makes a lot of sense when we go back to our emotional profile because the doo, 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 um, it helps with um, anxiety and feeling disconnected and feelings of isolation and loneliness so those are all um, feelings that associate with being ungrounded so tea tree oil um, is is an the is an earth element and will help you feel that really help that sensation of being grounded and centered and um, connected trees have big root systems that connect to one another and they communicate with each other through their root systems and um, so this is this is a really wonderful oil for that to use in spell work I'm um, using spell work that includes balance creativity determination emotions personal development healing um, removing hexes finding inspiration expanding the mind protection purification strength and trust and that is your tea tree um, profile today <laughs> is there any questions you have <laughs> do we have any questions would this be, I mean, you touched on it a little bit, but in the outdoor department, mm -hmm. um, would this be one of the ones that you would to, um, put together for your... Your outdoor first aid kit? Outdoor first aid kit or the shit hits the fan or your pr preparedness list? Yeah. Where, yes. Where, where, where would that fit in there? This is definitely a bug out bag oil because it, because it fights staff and strep and MRSA very um, strongly you want to take this with you it helps with bug bites it helps with um, sinus stuff it helps with being able to breathe so uh, I definitely definitely put this this oil in your bug out bag okay. and most of the time you can apply tea tree oil neat to your skin which means without a carrier oil um, if it makes you sensitive then I would of course recommend adding a carrier oil and starting at 2%. So, yeah. Do we have any other questions? What do you think about putting it on skin cancer? On what? Tea tree oil is regenerative, so you can put it on skin cancer. Um, it is good for deep wounds, so I think that you would be fine to do that. I would put it in a carrier, add a little frankincense to it, kind of make it equal parts frankincense and equal parts tea tree, and um, apply it. should help with skin healing and regeneration. Um, are you being treated in that area f as well, um, medically? What does it smell like? Tea tree oil smells like a camphory pine tree. Um, it's green, it's bright. There's a lot of camphor. There's a little bit of smell like rosemary. It's kind of like a piney rosemary camphory smell. Is that helpful? Um, you can use witch hazel as a carrier um, on the skin. Um, and it it actually witch hazel will actually help your your oils when you use them to disperse a little bit teach uh, excuse me witch hazel is a dispersant so it will cause your essential oil to spread and try and blend in with a body 
water or the fluid, the, the tea tree oil, excuse me, the witch hazel, um, more like a solution. So it won't just sit on the top of the witch hazel in droplets. It'll disperse and spread about. Um, yeah, it is a strong medicinal scent. Um, is it useful for nausea? I wouldn't use this oil for nausea. I would use fennel for nausea. Okay, let's see. Um, it what in what way for diabetics, Sherlock? You, um, I know diabetics have a lot of um, foot health issues as they get older, and um, it's great for caring for feet um, and toenails and uh, softening uh, heels and things. So yeah, you could use it that way. Um, Yeah, early bird. I would definitely get some tea tree and some frankincense and incorporate that into her care. Um, is this the same melaleuca that people use or relative? This is the same melaleuca. The, um, there are a couple other melaleucas, but the primary melaleuca for tea tree oil is melaleuca alternifolia. And I didn't tell you this. Do, 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 do. Here. It, it produces about 70 kilograms per of oil. It's a really prolific oil producer per um, thousand kilograms of um, leaf material. It produces about 70 kilograms of oil, which is why you can purchase it um, pretty fairly priced in most places. Um, Yeah, you can care. You can you definitely use this for wounds for um, for diabetic wounds. It, Sherlock, that would be a great way to use it. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Silver Creek. I will tell you, I had a nail fungus years ago. I had um, acrylic nails, try to be pretty and fancy, and I got a nail fungus on my thumb. So I took the I took the acrylic off and I treated my nail. In about a week, the nail fungus was gone and the nail grew back quickly and um, without any damage to it. So, firsthand experience, I can tell you how great it is that it works. Um, you're welcome. Is there any other questions for today? I'll give it a second to come in. All right. Well, it doesn't look like I have any more questions, so... I'm gonna uh, let you guys know your where's the best place to get essential oil. I use them for my soaps, but it's so expensive. Where are you at, Silver Creek? Are you in the U.S.? Your welcome, mine's in. You know, Julian, I would think that you could use it for ringworm. You're in Cincinnati. Um, there's a, in North Carolina near you, there's a company called Loving Scents, S-C-E-N-T-S. And she sells bulk oil at a really reasonable price. Um, and I used to work with her father for 15 years before he passed away. Um, so I know the quality of those oils are exceptional. Give her a, a try. Um, actually, you melaleuca trees are can be found um, in neighborhoods where there are zone where where they're in zone eight or above. So, 
check um, your local nurseries and see if they have them available and if they do you can um, grab a couple of pictures and go marching in your neighborhood to look for them they would be out in plain sun a lot like a eucalyptus tree would be they really love the sun so um, that just about covers it um, Wednesday I'm gonna be doing a, a, a class on uh, preparing for your sowing um, celebrations at the end of the month and on Friday I'm going to be teaching a class a kitchen witch class on how to make your black salt so um, join me then your essential oils for um, we put that link in there it's in your telegram mm -hmm. Corey's gonna give you a link to the events page on my website so you can um, keep track of the upcoming events and um, your tea tree oils will be coming up this month in the next week or so so um, keep your eye out in your mail for them and thank you guys for joining me I really enjoy seeing you here thanks so much Hold <laughs> don't kill it, don't kill it yet <laughs> I'm not as fast as you oh I'm sorry. not a moderator damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really struggling over here you're doing great. I see you over here. I don't know how you have nine conversations going on five different platforms. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I don't know how you do it. It's how I think. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, did you get it in there? Yeah, it's all good. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, all right. So we'll see you guys Wednesday. And are you going on tonight? Uh, yeah, we'll go on. Okay. Then we'll cover some news. Okay. We'll see you guys tonight on over there at the Phoenix Enigma, too. Good job, honey. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Have a good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>